of you in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. We have been evaluating the false teachings, the unbiblical teachings of Mr. Sojin. How his gospel goes right against the gospel of Jesus Christ, preached and practiced by the apostles. How his gospel is against the historic Christian faith. Uh, we also have evaluated and shown to you clearly how he majored on the minors and minored on majors and how he wrongly divided the word of truth, mm. how inadequate he was in interpreting the Bible, how he is twisting the text of the scripture. In this episode, we want to take another of his question head on. Bible says that in the beginning, God has created the heavens and the earth. And the same Bible says, the heaven is my, my throne and the earth is my footstool. Thus God is a God who lives inside a space and time or God is living outside the space and time. Thus the heavens can contain God or the God is the one who is containing the heavens and the earth. He says the Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth in Genesis chapter 1, verse mm -hmm. 1. Mm -hmm. And he also points to another place where it says, uh, where God says that heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Mm. So he puts both these verses in contention and he asks this question, does the universe contain God? or God contains universe. Now, once again, in the previous episodes, you have shown very clearly to our audience how they should refuse to be drawn into the questions, rather they should question the, question. the questions. Mm -hmm. Could you please tell us once again how to question this question? Well, once again, he is not approaching the scriptural teaching on the relationship between God, the creator, and the creation right. from that broader biblical perspective. Yeah. If you want to get the right perspective, mm -hmm. I think you should go to the book of Acts, mm -hmm. Chapter number 17, mm -hmm. uh, which we have referred to in a slightly different context already in the earlier episodes. Mm -hmm. So, Acts chapter 17, Paul, Paul is mm -hmm. in Athens addressing the intellectuals of his day. Mm -hmm. And he points out mm -hmm. in verse number 24 this truth. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. Right. He's not served by human hands. Mm -hmm. In a way, he's pointing out mm -hmm. that we cannot limit God to the temples built by human hands. Right. Now, if you read the whole Bible, mm -hmm. we know that yeah. God is a spiritual being non-physical, non-material being. Before matter, before time, before space, God was already there. And so, right. God, in a sense, mm -hmm. is beyond these three dimensions. Three dimensions. He is multi-dimensional. Right. So we can't limit him mm. and say God is just in it. Right. Because he is in it, but not limited to it. To it. Okay. Because as the creator of time and space and matter, mm. he works in it because God is imminent. Right. But his God is not just imminent. Because if we say God is just imminent, right. we are going the way of pantheism. Right. Which actually does not make a distinction between the creator and the creation. Right. All is God, God is all, is what pantheism teaches. Right. And then, on the other hand, we should not go the route 
of the deists yes. who say God created the heavens and the earth and has gone off on a long holiday and he's not involved in the affairs of this universe. Of this universe. No, yeah. God is involved, God is intervening, God right. performs miracles. Right. So the biblical truth is uh -huh. that God the creator in his relationship to the universe is both transcendent, yes. distinct from, right, and imminent involved in. Yeah. So Mr. Sojin mm -hmm. has no clue about this truth. Yeah. And he is asking misleading questions. Right. If he says, is God in the universe or outside the universe, he is actually making a category mistake. Right. Number one. Yeah. And he is actually uh, guilty of a faulty dilemma. Right. There's no dilemma. Yeah. And also, Sai, Mr. Sojin seems to be misunderstanding the biblical language. Right. Forgetting the truth about the nature of God. Right. When the Bible says that heaven is his throne mm -hmm. and the earth is his footstool, we are not supposed to take that language literally because God is a spiritual being, non-physical. So this language has to be understood yeah. in a metaphorical fashion, right. in a figurative fashion. Yeah. And such language in theological, you know, uh, circles is called anthropomorphism. Yeah. Using the forms of language and figures that humans use, yeah to explain some aspect of the nature and the character of God. Right. And so he is also guilty mm -hmm. of misinterpreting the biblical language, right. misreading the biblical text, taking yeah. it literally where it has to be actually taken figuratively. Yeah. That's, it's dangerous to and to, to divide the word like that. Like that. And I think he has done not only logical mistake in huh. understanding the nature of God, God. Uh, not only uh, did violence to the text, text, but he did violence to the context as well. Context as well. So I want to read where mm -hmm. it shows. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, when it says heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool, uh, there are at least in two mm -hmm. instances where we see this one. Uh -huh. Uh, one is in Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1 mm. and another is in Acts chapter 7 verse 49. Mm. Uh, I want to read actually a couple of verses from Acts chapter 7, seven. starting from verse 47. Mm. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. Mm. Here Stephen, this is the speech of Stephen yeah. uh, before his martyrdom. Mm. So he says, but it was Solomon who built a house for him. However, the Most High mm. does not live in houses made by human hands. Mm. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Mm. Or where will be my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? Mm. The context itself says, the transcendent aspect that you said. Yes. God is transcendent. Mm. He is above uh, heaven. He is mm. above the earth. These are all made by him. Mm. God says very clearly that I don't live inside of it, but I'm above these things, the transcendent aspect of it. That's right. That's what God says. And even in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1 as mm. well, mm. we see that heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Mm. Where is the house you will build for me? Where will be my resting place? Has not my hand made all these things? <laughs> so they came into being. So, Mr. Sojin, I don't know how he really thought that the, the, the verse, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. How did means it means that God his, is Inside, inside and limited to the universe. Whereas the context itself says that God is above it. Above, no. beyond it. Beyond it. And that's what exactly Paul yeah. in Acts chapter 17, verse number 24, is saying to the Athenians. Right. Because some of them were Stoics who <laughs> believed that God is part of the universe. That's right. And some of them were Epicureans mm. who believed that actually God is so far removed from mm. the universe, or that's gods right. are so far removed from the universe. Yeah. So both were wrong, Paul says. That's right. Because uh, the, the God of the Bible is transcendent. Mm. 
he is beyond the universe. He created the universe. Mm. The universe did not come from him. Mm. But at the same time, in his mercy, he mm. decided to involve within That's the right. affairs of the uh, of within the within within heavens. Mm. So I think the the transcendent aspect and the immanent aspect, aspect. that you said. Mm. Um, uh, he misses totally because Absolutely. of his lack of comprehens comprehension of the biblical teaching. Absolutely. So once again, yeah. his ignorance, his deliberate misinterpretation of the scriptures yeah. is coming to the fore. To and the fore. he is guilty yeah. of wrongly dividing the word of truth. Of truth. I think he should learn to take a text Yes. in its context right. rather than taking it out of its context and making it say what it actually does not say. Right. This is dangerous folks. I don't think he is able to either read Biblical Hebrew yeah. or understand it and without understanding he's making big claims yeah. and it's a very sad story of a false teacher yeah. trying to confuse Christians. Right with his confused and misguided interpretation of the scriptures because he has no training in hermeneutics of any sort. Yeah, yeah. So, audience, brothers and sisters, mm. this is a serious matter. He doesn't understand the biblical languages but claims or makes comments on translations. Mm. He doesn't know how to rightly divide the word of truth and twist the scriptures and confuses the people, as Brother Sudhakar said. Yes. And he, he doesn't have all options. That's right. Like, does heavens, or does the universe contain God or God contains universe? Both these options are wrong. There is a tertium quid. There is a third option that oh, the Bible says. That's right. Which Brother Sudhakar very balancedly <laughs> told. Our God is a transcendent God. At the same time, he's immanent. In his mercy, he chose to involve in the affairs of the universe. And also, yes. one final clarification is, God is so big that the universe is in his presence. Yes. And he is present everywhere. Right. But he is not in everything. Yes. And those distinctions also, unfortunately, Sojin yes. fails to make. Yeah. That's why he tends to go either in the pantheistic direction or in the deistic direction, yeah. both of which are not, biblical. are not biblical. The biblical alternative is the third alternative, right. which says that God is the creator. He is distinct from it. He is transcendent in relationship to it. But as the one who created the universe for a purpose, he is involved in it actively. And that is his imminent. Right. Right. So I think you are right. Yeah. Mr. Sojin, if you're watching this video, um, we invite you with mm -hmm. love to humble yourself and submit yourself to the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And we invite you to stop preaching these false teachings. And those who are listening to his messages, please don't buy into these messages uncritically. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says very clearly, don't be gullible. Mm. Don't believe in everything. Every spirit. Every spirit. Test. Or judge the spirits. Judge the spirits. <laughs> Test everything and hold on to what is good. good. So be careful when you listen to preachings like this. Hope you are blessed by these videos. In the coming video, we will come up with another question. Stay tuned. Thank you. Yeah. That's right.